as you can see, we've got a little overhang in here, and that was something that you want to make make certain that you have uh, your rails are long enough for this because this part here, the outside rail will cover to the outside edge. Same as the reason uh, for the and the transom there, in case you hit anything, it'll glaze by on the end of this piece and not pick up the edge of this and try to rip it out. I need a new blade. There, I've got a got my finish. And it's flat enough, it's out, out a little bit on the bottom here, but the gel magic will fix it and so you won't really know. On the, the bow rail here, normally I would use a thicker piece of wood. Probably I should have had something that was inch and three quarters wide, but I didn't have any uh, material like that and I didn't want to have to go out and buy just a little bit for this, but I'm going to double it up and you really won't tell and you can use the extra it'll be a little deeper than necessary but uh, once it's all epoxied in and stained you can't tell but it's nice to have that extra material up here for when you're putting in your anchors and whatever um, so and also this it's setting a little higher and so what I want is I'll set my anchor the thing here on the rail and I want to be sure that the projected edge goes through that comes up near the top of this because uh, if, if I didn't do that and I put the other rail on the inside it, it would have a tended to uh, uh, where the nose looks like it's dropping off so with this extra height up here I'm probably setting about uh, I don't know uh, a quarter maybe five sixteenths higher than the top of the uh, plywood rail which is high to begin with, but that gives me plenty of material to uh, plane down because I'm going to have to take down that much on the back of this to get into here. So, and then I'll attach this on the bottom, and then we'll have a flat top. You'll see it when I get done. The other thing too, I've set my gauge and I measured across here to know that I'm level. I'm level on the uh, bow panel in the hull, so that's okay. So now I'm going to draw three screws on a line I already have installed or made just so when I get the epoxy on it doesn't like slipping around on me when I'm clamping it up. out the gel magic. Well I got the, the bow in and you can see I've got some extra clamps here. I put the uh, the lower part on too with epoxy or gel magic on the top and then on the face so they're in there. Uh, I won't have to uh, screw that lower one because it'll be exposed but another another dead soldier you know I don't know how many of these tubes I've gone through but it's the only way to fly. Well, it's been a couple days since we had the, uh, put the rail on, so I can start taking the clamps off now. And you'll also notice, too, where the uh, wood rails, or the wood clamps come over, I got plastic underneath of them so that they don't become a permanent part of the boat. Uh, I always want to be checking on that, too, so you can see it's, it's cold and I've got my little shop heater on. I don't know if it's going to do much good. It's in the... The upper 30s in the shop here. We're having kind of like a cold weather, not quite as bad as the folks in Minnesota or along the, the really cold area, but I think it's about 28 right now in the afternoon at about 2. Power just came back on, so the Seahawks have got a sunny day to have their, uh, their parade today in Seattle, but uh, there's no way I'm going to fight a crowd of half a million people to go down and see them. So. I'm going to start taking this off 
and we'll do it off camera and come back. I've got to do some, uh, some thinking now and I'll show you my process that I'm using in order to figure out where the center seat is because uh, that is going to determine where the Orlock socket goes and the spacer block that um, it rests in because then after I, I determine those I have a rough idea but once I get those finalized then the, uh, the three inch base three inch blocks go out in each direction and they'll end up in a longer block as we get into the corner which I'll show you when we get to that point so let me take this off yeah, I took the uh, the draw saw and trimmed this down flat into here and I did some surfacing, uh, some sanding and scraping along here. Well, I got my, my balance tube underneath and I got my seat placed. I'm going to have a little more weight under the seat because we're going to have the seat housing, but it'll be balanced there. So, And I want to have as much room as possible standing in the back. I guess like right now I've got about... between the uh, back of the seat, 43, 44 inches between the back of the seat and the transom. So you're going to have plenty of area to stand up, but the seat's going to be higher. You're going to be at 12 inches off the bottom, so it'll be a more of a comfortable seating. And my feet will be a little bit more back in, so I may move the seat because I found that a, a person's balance point you have about as much weight in your legs as you do in your body for a normal person. Well, I have the, uh, the seat at about 44 inches. That's my center, my body center of gravity. That's where your legs come together. Uh, so you have as much going out this direction as you have going that direction. Your leg mass weighs about as much as your body mass does. So I've got it setting on the uh, four foot cut line. One, two, three, four. Four foot station cut line on the bottom panel, which uh, is a couple of inches beyond the uh, four foot on the side panel. But 12 inches ahead is where my arm length is. So I will set them two inches aft. Where's my finger at? I'll set the uh, Orlock bracket socket two inches aft of this station line cut mark you can see here. The orlock will go right there. And since this only has one set, that's all I'll put in here. So my, my orlock bracket will be spaced in here. One of the things we have to do on the uh, these longer blocks where the rails go, these, I, I went 10 inches. Uh, so I marked out uh, one inch lines across here. And then now I'll take the draw saw and put in sipes. I'll use the uh, quarter inch plywood as my depth gauge here. Okay. So now I got some some lines in here to help it bend. One of the things that happened before I put these sight marks in, I wanted to see if this was straight enough along here. There's a little bit of a gap, maybe an eighth of an inch. Uh, when I was flexing this, I was distorting the curve of the rail, but now when I, uh, when I compress it in, it really doesn't affect the rail any. So now I got one centered up and get my fingers to work. Okay. So now I got my sight marks in here. And <laughs> that one was an ugly looking one. Put that side up. Epoxy, when we do the ceiling, will fill up any of the holes along here. Plus we'll have another another rail out here too. So it'll be at least that wide. Well, as you can see, once I've got the uh, Orlock sockets, uh, brackets, the longer brackets cut and in place clamped in their specific uh, areas on both sides, uh, then I came along, and I'll show you what I'm doing on the other side, but I went and uh, finished off 
uh, this side aft of the orlock socket and now I'm going to be working on this one over here and basically I've what I've done is I've cut out my three inch blocks on my bandsaw and then once I have this marked and in the center of this orlock socket bracket is centered up on the three foot uh, station cut line. I moved it a little bit just so it's a uh, I wanted to move the seat back just a hair from what we did the other day. So now I'll go along. I've got this one. I've got my block. I'll put in another spacer block. Put in the next one that gets glued in place. And move my spacer block over. Just keep doing that until I get up to the end here. And then we'll do the longer longer block which should be nine and a quarter inches to get me into the uh, corner yeah nine and a quarter so let me go ahead and cut that one and we'll come back now i've got this one cut to the length to go into the uh, transom so i got my space in here i'll come back and, and thread out my clamps and clamp these down and get them ready for the next. So it's basically the same thing heading forward. There's another uh, clamp here and then spacer and then a permanent clamp will go in here and I just continue on to the bow. I'm going to show you one thing about the uh, uh, corners. And we'll go to handheld. One of the things I like to try to do to make it look correctly is when I come into this last uh, block, and I'm gonna the one I've got over there, I'm gonna take out and put some sight marks in it too, just to give it some extra curve. Was we'll come in to the corner here. Now this area, uh, instead of trying to figure out what all the fancy angles are in order to make the cut on either table saw or bandsaw is I'm going to fill that whole area with uh, easy fillet and just press it down and shape the whole thing. The easy fillet takes a nice stain and then uh, when we get around with the other blocks farther out I'll show you how I strengthen them up underneath. But the thing is when I come in with this block here I try to make this one along the transom the same exact length before the first space so now I've got a excuse me I've got a space right here and then I got one over here on the other side and then this block in the middle is all one piece to give it some extra strength so I, I always try to put um, two gaps in the transom so you can lift it in the bow and drain any water out uh, I've had some other boats where I didn't do something like that and uh, it's a pain to drain, uh, drain the water out, so. Starting to look like a hole now. We'll come back. I guess I can give you a little bit of a, a side shot here. As she's coming along. She can be a pretty little thing. We'll see you next time. <laughs>